As we present this program and look back through the years, we remember the many, many people who were instrumental in helping establish River Park, as well as the time, effort, and dedication they so willingly gave to make it so successful for our clients. There is no way I can ever thank them all for their amazing contributions to River Park. I would like to mention a few, however. In those early days, River Park was very lucky to have two men involved. Jack Parr and Shan Burke. They were in the process of developing an idea conceived in 1968. It was a halfway house for women recovering from alcoholism. They had arranged for some space at St. Mary's Hospital in Pier. The sisters would make the unused third floor of their convent available. Jack and Shan contacted me to develop both the facility and the program. My recent experience in treatment plus my many years in business and personnel management were the unique qualifications they wanted for their plan. As for me, this was answering the personal need I had so strongly felt since my return from the treatment center. I had to help others. I had to somehow repay those who had helped me. And this was a golden opportunity. And River Park's blessings continued when another friend, Ben Hens helped me apply for and earn some small grants. These were the dollars we needed to acquire the simple but necessary furnishings, furniture, beds, linens, cleaning supplies, the everyday mundane items we couldn't do without. And, by the way, these initial grants were the only public money ever used in the history of River Park. Another of our early associates was Lynn Carroll, who founded the first private and nonprofit treatment center in the nation. Lynn helped us develop our program as an advisor, lecturer, and invaluable friend. After nearly a year of research, planning, fundraising, and program development, the facility was finally opened in August of 1971. Dr. B. O. Lindblom was my personal physician who also served as our corporate medical director. He dedicated uncounted hours and even days serving clients during the life of River Park and Pier, and all at no cost to River Park at any time. Those first months were a struggle to put things in order and get our personnel online. Our first goal was to make certain we had the physical facility we needed. Then to create an atmosphere conducive to recovery. For our basic construction projects, remodeling of our space and the mechanical needs, we were befriended by general contractor George Specker. George came in with plans we could afford, considering our very limited funds. He was able to achieve the things we needed for hundreds of dollars when others wanted thousands. Even in those earliest days, we knew we had to provide our clients with more than cold institutional surroundings. In order to facilitate treatment, we wanted to create warmth and beauty and personal comfort. We termed it a restful haven for quiet thinking, and this was a totally new concept to help counteract the problems of low self-esteem afflicting so many alcoholics. And there to help us, was our longtime friend, Mary Jordan. As an interior designer, Mary had a real eye for creating just the right atmosphere for both our private rooms and our meeting places. She was invaluable to River Park and its clients. As a result of Mary's talent and dedication, we had our atmosphere of beauty, comfort, and healing. River Park was also more than blessed when Sister Joyce Piotz, St. Mary's staff dietitian, came to our door offering her help. From the very beginning, her knowledge, interest, love, and willingness to take on any and all responsibilities was a true godsend. Having Sister Joyce at my side was a constant strength. She helped me and so very many others make it through trying days and weeks. Her presence in our formative years and throughout the entire life of River Park was one of the many miracles that made it all possible. Another who gave so much of himself to those of us at River Park, both staff and clients, 
was my father, Lloyd Jorgensen. He was a lecturer, a teacher, a most talented storyteller, and a friend to us all. And in his tales were messages of caring, of example, and of hope. To many of our clients, Lloyd was a father figure. He was someone they could always go to and count on for a bit of encouragement, especially at times when the world was pressing down on them a little too hard. And there was need for an added program of help. As they saw how River Park's treatment program helped our clients, some family members said to us, I wish there was something like this for us. We are still out there fighting for survival. Our loved one is getting treatment, but no one cares for us. It was this request and a very personal experience that led to the answer. River Park's family program was actually founded by Phyllis, who from her personal experience understood the hurt that is so prevalent in families. At that point in time, I'd been attending Al-Anon meetings for many years and knew how they had helped me. So it seemed logical to simply borrow from that most successful program and see where it would lead us. We began in a very low-key way, just some informal weekend get-togethers with two or three of us, and then we began adding a few more participants. This soon evolved into rather intense educational sessions with a great deal of interaction and some discussion, which in turn led to some therapy. In the late 70s, we were all very pleased when these weekends became a more structured five-day program for wives, husbands, and family members, and even those as young as preteens. From then on, it was an integral part of the total River Park program of treatment. For me, it was an awesome experience to be a part of it. And this effort became a forerunner for many family programs that have now spread across the nation.